damage to our cells. And we try to shield the astronauts as best we can because they're above the atmosphere. We're shielded here by the at atmosphere quite a bit. Right. But above that, you don't have that natural shielding. So we have to do it with, with metal in the, in the vehicle and then some water bags around the sleep station so they can sleep surrounded by water. And that also helps absorb some of that radiation. Okay. Now, you know, we, we also are, are kind of excited about space communications, and that's certainly another special research area. Um, and so also with me here today is Dr. Uh, Tamitha Scove. Now, you're from the Aerospace Corporation yes. in Los Angeles, so welcome to Central Missouri. Thank you. Now, you're also a, a space meteorologist, yes. and you are also referred to as the space weather woman. I am. Right? So I'm, I've been intrigued by this. What, what exactly does a space weather woman do? Well, most people don't realize that the sun actually has its own unique weather that comes from it. And those solar eruptions that come from the sun, they actually uh, hit Earth and cause issues for us. So I actually do a weekly broadcast weather predictions, just like you do, like a meteorologist, mm -hmm. that talks about when these events hit Earth and the types of issues that they cause for things like communications, like GPS and other systems. Okay. Now, we're just about 15 seconds away, actually, I believe, yes, from totality. Yes, we've got to put our glasses on. So we're going to put our, our glasses on. You you can hear the crowd cheering in the yes, background, and it is getting dark. We're getting close to Bailey Beats. Here we go. We're almost at totality. And you can see the here Bailey we go. Beats, the, almost the diamond ring right there. And there we go. I think we're at totality. So so now you can take, oh, you can take your glasses off. That is that amazing. Is amazing. You can actually see the corona a little bit yeah. even through the clouds. That is incredible. Dr. Kavande, you've, you've been in space. You've seen numerous sunrises and sunsets from the space shuttle. Yeah. How does this event compare? Oh, this is completely different than anything I've seen before. I never saw an eclipse. Not, I mean, I've seen a partial, but nothing like this. This is really unique and uh, nothing like I saw in space. Space has this really cool visual, right. but this is really amazing. You know, and I'm, I'm starting to hear the crickets. They're starting yeah. to come on yeah. out. Obviously, yeah. the street lamps. Um, this is just amazing. Now, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm also looking up to try to find the Big Dipper and some of the other stars, yeah, some other the, planets. Not for the clouds likely right and I'm like almost I'm really mesmerized by this this is this is a spectacular event we've had several solar storms that have been launched and some of them have been launched from the left side of the Sun so we're actually seeing a difference from what the corona looked like in our predictions to what it looks like now and then on top of that we have ham radio operators all over the, the state right now who are making contacts that they haven't been able to make because the upper atmosphere is just all all turbulent right now and it affects the communication signal so we've got gps operators and ham radio operators doing a ton of science and it's just so it's overwhelming this, this is amazing now my my team of atmospheric science researchers from the university of missouri they are actually sending up uh, weather balloons here this afternoon to try to figure out you know how the weather is changing at certain height levels and uh, actually, here's a map of the, of the solar uh, radiation um, throughout the state of Missouri. And you can kind of see how much solar radiation is hitting the surface of the Earth here in Missouri. Um, just interesting. <laughs> this is amazing. It is. You can tell the crowd is just mesmerized. This is so cool. And you can even see the dips in the valleys as you can see little yes. areas of the sun where it's shining through more. Right. And those create the Bailey beads right. that we see as we become, we get out of totality, which right. is coming up here pretty soon. Right. Uh, yet, yeah. I think we uh, we come out of totality at uh, 1 15 35 local yeah. time. So yeah. we just have a few more seconds of that. Um, absolutely an amazing event. And again, we're so lucky that some of these high clouds were able to kind of fall apart, yeah, yeah. Kind of fall part, apart a little bit so we could experience this. For us, yes. And I can't believe we can actually see the corona through the clouds. Great. Okay, yeah. that's the air horn. We're coming out of totality. We're going to so have to end up going. So we need to put our, our safety in, in in just glasses a, in back on. There we go. Put your barely beans. There we go. we got to put the glasses back on. Oh, my okay. goodness. So as you can see, we're coming out of totality here in Jefferson City, Missouri. Ladies, thank you so much You're for welcome. experiencing this with me. Yes. Thank Quite you. Quite an experience. Thank yes, you very it was. Much. Thank you. So everyone's excited here in Jefferson City, Missouri. The sun's starting to come out a little bit. We're going to go ahead and send it back to Charleston. We should have stayed. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Eric. Yadi, wow. I it's an amazing, like, I get goosebumps every time I see this. And so I cannot imagine how it's going to be, you know, when we actually see it here in South Carolina. I mean, so, Alex, you know, I'm <laughs> speechless, man. I mean, I, as a scientist, yeah. you got to, like, love this stuff, oh right? Oh, my God. And I, it's so great to hear mm -hmm. that. I mean, I love hearing an experienced astronaut talk about how overwhelming it is, given the amazing things that she has seen. 
but also to hear my colleague, Tamitha Scove, who is also a heliophysicist and a space weather expert, I can hear the excitement in her voice. I can, I mean, it's, it's palpable. It's just yeah. great. Okay. So check this out, guys. I mean, I, I think things are going so smooth. We're going to go to another image right now from Hopkins Girl. Uh, Brian Massey out there from Marshall Space Flight Center. What's going on? You got some action there. Hopkinsville. There it is. Uh, that's beautiful. They're getting close. Now, 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 it's yellow. Is that, if we had purple, does that mean something there? Well, the previous one we saw that was purple was calcium K. It was a blue kind of light. This is actually uh, more of a white light, continuous. Yeah. But the thing to remember is sometimes the different filters you use uh, will change the color just yeah. a little bit. But what we're seeing here is really more visible, broader spectrum white light. Okay. White light. Let me, let me, John, uh, you gotta have some cool stuff yeah, on uh, social media. This is a good question, uh, guys. Uh, Mark from Facebook is asking, and this is what really applies right now. When observing the moon at night, I see uh, it proceed from eastern to western horizon, much like the sun does. How come the solar eclipse is traveling from west to east across the U.S.? Well, again, that, that's because when we're looking at the moonrise, that's actually because of our location on the Earth and the fact that the Earth is rotating from west to east, the same reason that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. But the moon itself is moving in the same direction the Earth is rotating, and it's casting that shadow down on the Earth, and that is moving in the direction that, the, that both the moon is, ro is orbiting and the Earth is rotating, so from west to east. Okay, so the, 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 the total eclipse has now passed over half the country. It's currently over Illinois, and uh, I think we're going to have some views coming up shortly, but what I really want to do here, guys, is this has been really incredible. I want to give a shout-out to the College of Charleston. Make some noise. Yeah. So now we've got live video coming to us from Hopkinsville, Kentucky. It's a small town that's known for southern hospitality, like Charleston. And it's also a prime spot for viewing this total solar eclipse. Hopkinsville is the city with the longest duration of the total solar eclipse for a total of 2 minutes and 40 seconds of totality. NASA's Monster Space Flight Center, Space Flight Center, Brian Massey, I'm so excited. What you got, man? Dwayne, we're just as excited as you are. We are here in Eclipseville. Say hello, everybody. Oh, we're having a great time. I'm surrounded by a thousand of my best friends. We're getting ready. It's starting to get a little darker already. We're also joined here by NASA Marshall Planetary Scientist, Renee Weber. Renee, thanks for joining us. Thanks. It's really great to be here. I just want to say thank you to the city of Hopkinsville for having us out on this beautiful farm in Kentucky. And we're just all really excited. Yeah, definitely. It's a lot of fun. It, this light's starting to fade and the excitement's getting bigger. Uh, we are at the point of greatest eclipse here at Hopkinsville. Renee, tell us a little bit. What's the significance of that? Well, the point of greatest eclipse is actually a point in time when the axis of the moon's shadow is pointed most directly towards the center of the Earth. Great. So we are at the point on the surface of the Earth where that time occurs. Exactly. The shadow will actually be more circular here than anywhere else in the country, correct? That's right. And, and it's just it's getting really dim and uh, we are just so close. It's incredible. Yeah, it's this is amazing. We can't wait to break out uh, in the darkness. We've got our glasses out. We We've been looking up at it. You can see now on the screen uh, our live uh, telescope view, and this is just amazing. Everybody is really enjoying it. Uh, we've got people from all over Kentucky, people from all over the world have joined us here as this is Eclipseville, USA, and we are just a few minutes away from uh, total totality. Uh, but before we get to that point, Renee, tell us, you're a planetary scientist and you uh, specialize in the moon, a lunar scientist. H how does the eclipse really speak to what you do? Well, it is pretty cool to look up there, and when you're seeing that sun get dimmer and dimmer, it's because the moon is up there. Right. And I like to tell everyone that you're really looking at the moon when you're watching a solar eclipse, and uh, it's just getting dim, and it's starting to get a lot cooler, too. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. Crazy. This is my first solar eclipse. Renee, have you ever experienced one? This is my first total eclipse, too. I've seen partial eclipses, but I've never had a chance to see totality before, and I'm just so excited. It's amazing. The, the light is starting to fade as the moon steps in front of the sun here, and it's already just a really eerie feeling here getting dark
start in the middle of the day, but uh, we're really excited about it, and we're just a few seconds away. Uh, I've lost my counter, but I'm gonna look back at the sun while I still have the opportunity. Wow, that is absolutely amazing. We're down to just a thin sliver of the sun. Renee, what do you think about this? I can't believe it. It's just, it looks incredible, and it really is starting to get dim, and you, nobody even needs their sunglasses. Just your eclipse glasses, and you can see that beautiful crescent sun. Wow, this is absolutely amazing. We're just really looking forward to that for a chance. We got no clouds here in the sky, and you can see some airplanes up there, but that sun is just getting smaller and smaller. Yeah, it's definitely a Hopkinsville, Kentucky Chamber of Commerce sponsored day here in Eclipseville. There's not a cloud in the sky, and it's amazing how it's gotten so much cooler here since since the uh, the sun started covering up the or the start is already being covered. Yeah, it's nice to have a break from that hot southern sun. <laughs> yeah, definitely. We've been sweating it out a couple days here. In in Hopkinsville getting ready for this. We're getting really close now. So what exactly are we looking at here, Renee? Well, we are just about close to 100%. It's just getting smaller and smaller, and it's getting dimmer and dimmer, and hopefully soon we'll have a chance to see those Bailey's beads and that diamond ring. Right. That's when you can actually see the light shining through the moon's valleys. And the moon's not a perfectly smooth sphere. It's got that rugged surface, and you can see those sun rays shining through those mountains and valleys and craters. Wow. And it's looking like we're about one minute out now and it's just getting smaller and smaller. Wow, this is this is amazing. The crowd's getting really excited too. <laughs> hey guys, who back there is excited for the solar eclipse? Wow, it's getting closer. Wow. It's just getting really close to nighttime. It's incredible. It's like very dim. Definitely it feels like dawn or dusk here in Hopkinsville right now as it's getting closer. And you can see on our feed, there's that tiny, tiny little sliver left to go. And it's really starting to get dark now. Wow. wow. It's Goodness like dust. Gracious. And you can see the pink color around the horizon. Oh, it's like the sunset. It's wow. beautiful. Oh it's going. It's going. Wow. Just that tiny, tiny last sliver. Oh, my goodness. Wow. <laughs> and we are in total solar eclipse. Wow. And this is absolutely breathtaking. Yeah, you can see the corona, that beautiful white wispy crown coming out from the sun in all directions. And we can see airplanes, and I think I see Jupiter in the sky over there. I think I can see Jupiter. Wow. And I see other planets too, and stars. I can only imagine in ancient times what <laughs> this much has been like I know. out of nowhere. I am covered in head to toe in goosebumps, a petite chill. I know, I am too. Body. I just can't believe we finally got a chance to see it. I mean, it's one thing to read about it, but it's another thing when you get to see it yourself with your own eyes. Guys, we're going to take a break here just a second. We're going to step back and fully enjoy this and hope you enjoy our feed on the telescope.
Eclipseville. It has definitely lived up to. And now its we're name. getting that diamond Here ring we go. On the We've way got out. it coming back. The moon is stepping aside and from the sun. Totality is getting is brighter. Over. Totality has finished here at Hopkinsville. Wow, that was absolutely amazing, Grenade. Can you even try to put it in words? I can. I mean, I just have goosebumps all over my body. <laughs> Wow, this is amazing. We can see the birds flying yeah, around in the distance. Yeah, we can see the sun starting to come out and it's getting bright again. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. It's really a once in a lifetime opportunity yeah, until definitely. the next <laughs> yeah, exactly. we'll have only six years away. We get to no, see it again. Wow, I, we'll be there. Yeah. <laughs> we will be making Without our way. Doubt, I think I'm hooked. I'm an addict. <laughs> <laughs> we have sat in meetings preparing for this for the last two or three months. And now that it's actually here, it's completely 100% lived up to its billing. And I, I can't imagine, I, I can't believe what just happened. It was just amazing. We were so worried about the weather and the, right, and yeah. the broadcast and making sure our telescope was set up and everything went smooth and we just had a <laughs> blast. Wow, this has been absolutely amazing. <laughs> Folks, we have really enjoyed it. It's been a great time here at Hopkinsville, here at Eclipseville, USA. Now time for us to send it back to Clarksville, Tennessee, where our good friend Chris Blair is standing by for their reaction to the eclipse. Chris? Well, I, <laughs> I think he meant Charleston, not, not, not Clarksville. <laughs> so let's bring it back here at Eclipse Central. There's only one Eclipse Central, and it's here in Charleston. <laughs>